Okay everyone, let's talk about slab. A slab is an important structural element as it is generally a flat surface where we can use to put the furniture on or the equipments or a platform for gatherings and so much more. The role of a slab is to transfer the load safely to the nearest beams or columns. A slab should be designed such that it can transfer the load safely without excessive deflection. There are different types of slab. The first type is a one-way slab, like this. A slab is one-way when it's supported by beams and the ratio of the longer side to the shorter side is equal or greater than 2. So if this slab is loaded, logically it will use the shortest distance to transfer the loads to the nearest beams. Hence the direction of the main reinforcement should be in the short direction. The second type of slab is a two-way slab, like this. A slab is two-way when it's supported by beams and the ratio of the longer side to the shorter side is less than two. So if this slab is loaded, it will transfer the loads to the beams at four sides. The third type of slab is a flat plate, like this. A flat plate is when there are no beams and the slab will have to transfer the load directly to the nearby columns. A flat plate is an ideal case. Aside from the structural engineers don't need to design for beams, architects will love it too because they have all the headroom to play with and it's aesthetically better without beams. Mechanical and electrical engineers would love it too. They can install the cables and the ductings without worrying about punching through the beams. However, a flat plate has limitation. It is only feasible if the slab span is not too long and the loadings are not too heavy. That brings us to the fourth type of slab, which is a flat slab like this. A flat slab is also when there are no beams and the slab will have to transfer the loads directly to the nearby columns. Except there will be drop panels at the column areas. The introduction of the drop panels will take care of the punching shear and the bending moments around the column supports. For this video, I will show a basic example of how to design a one-way slab. When a one-way slab is loaded, the deflected shape of the slab looks like this. For analysis and design, we will cut out a one meter strip of the slab and analyze it like a beam where one meter is the width and the total depth h would be the thickness of the slab. So let's try to design a one-way slab. Let's say for example we will design a restaurant slab with a service live load of 4.8 kilopascals. The slab clear span is about 4.6 meters. We will use a concrete strength of 28 megapascals and a steel strength of 345 megapascals. The first part is to calculate the thickness of the slab and the effective depth. The highlighted slab in design is continuous at both ends. ACI code specified the minimum values of H or the thickness of a one-way slab unless deflections are calculated. So let's use this table so we don't need to check for deflection. So based on the table for one-way slab with both ends continuous, we can use the L over 28 formula and we can get a thickness of about 164 mm. Let's use 165 mm thick slab. Let's also use a 20 mm concrete cover. ACI code specify that the minimum cover for slab should be 20 mm. So let's use that. Let's use a T13 diameter bar for our main reinforcement. And let's calculate for the effective depth, which is the thickness of the slab minus the concrete cover minus half of the diameter of the bar. That will give us a value of about 139 millimeters. And since we are designing for a one meter strip slab, then we will use a B value of one meter. The next part is to calculate the load and moments. So we know that the live load is given, which is 4.8 kilopascals. Let's calculate for the dead load. The dead load is the thickness of the slab times the unit weight of concrete, which is 23.5 kN per cubic meter. So we get a value of 3.88 kilopascals for dead load. And then let's compute the total load by using the loading combination 1.2 times dead load plus 1.6 times live load. That will give us a value of 12.33 kilopascals. 
The slab in design is an interior span and a continuous slab. A continuous slab is statically indeterminate, so we can't use the equilibrium equations to solve for the moment. So we will use the ACI approximation moment method or the ACI coefficients moment method to solve for the moments. So the positive moment at mid span for interior span according to ACI approximate moment method is equal to WL squared over 16. That's the positive moment at the mid span. And then the negative moment at other faces of the interior supports will be equal to WL squared over 11. So it looks like this. Please note that ACI code allows the use of moment approximation method for continuous slab or beams provided there are two or more spans, the spans are approximately equal, the loads are uniformly distributed, the unit live load does not exceed three times the unit dead load, and the members are prismatic or the cross section is constant all throughout. So as you notice, the negative moment is larger than the positive moment. So it means we will have to provide more reinforcement at the supports area. The next part is to do a shear check. Though the shear capacity most of the time is greater than the shear stress, we still need to do a check. We start by calculating the critical shear at distance d from support, which is given by the formula WL over 2 minus WD which gives a value of 27 kN. And then we calculate the shear capacity of the concrete, which is given by this formula. The strength reduction factor for shear is equivalent to 0.75. Based on the shear capacity, which is 93 kN, it is greater than the critical shear. The next part is to calculate for the required steel areas and the steel ratios, and then we will check if the steel ratios are within the limits. Based on the stress block diagram, the formula for the ultimate moment is equal to the strength reduction factor times the tension force, which is the steel area times the strength of the steel times the moment arm, T minus A over 2. So for this formula, we know the moment, which we calculated earlier, but we don't know the steel area yet and we also don't know the value of A. So let's assume first the value of A to be 20 mm, and then later on we'll counter check. We will also assume that the strength reduction factor is equal to 0.90, meaning the member is under tension controlled, and we will use the larger moment, which is the negative moment. So from here, we can calculate the steel area to be equal to 595 mm square. Based on the stress block diagram, we know that the tension force is equal to the compression force, so we can derive the formula for A, which is this. And then by substituting the steel area, which we calculated earlier, we get a value of A equals to 8.62 mm. And this is the final value of A that we're going to use. Using the final value of A, which is 8.62 mm, and by using the same formula we used to calculate for the steel area, we then calculate the steel area for the top reinforcement using the negative moment, which is the moment that supports. And then we also calculate the steel area for the bottom reinforcement using the positive moment, which is the moment at mid span. Then we will get these values. Let's calculate our steel ratio limits and then compare to the actual steel ratio that we have calculated earlier. Since the actual steel ratios are less than the maximum ratio, then we are safe. This also means that the slab is indeed under tension control as initially assumed. Please note that we will also use the minimum steel ratio to calculate the steel area for the distribution bars or the bars along the longer direction. Since this longer side is not critical, we can use the minimum steel area as rebars for temperature and shrinkage purposes. The last part is the rebar arrangement. So based on a T13 diameter bar, we calculate the quantity of rebars at top and at the bottom. So based on this formula, we get five numbers of 
T13 at the top and three numbers of T13 at the bottom. We then check the spacing. According to ACI code, the spacing must not be greater than three times the thickness of the slab or 450 mm. So based on the calculated spacing, these are acceptable. Let's calculate for the distribution bars using the minimum steel ratio for shrinkage and temperature reinforcement. We will also use T13 diameter size for distribution bars. However, by calculating the spacing, we get a value of 479, which is greater than the maximum spacing requirement. So we shall use 450 mm instead. There are two ways to arrange the rebars on the slab. We can arrange as a straight bars like this, or we can arrange it as straight bars and then bent bars like this. Finally, to summarize, we will provide T13 at 200 mm spacing for top bars that supports. We will provide T13 at 300 mm spacing for bottom bars. And we will provide T13 at 450 mm spacing for distribution bars.